welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. 25 years ago this month, my second book, Cyber Business Mindsets for a Wired Age, was published by John Wiley and Sons. This was one of the first books in the world to predict the rise of e-business and social media, and so a quarter of a century later it seems a nice idea to look back and reflect on the what I got right, what I got wrong, and to look ahead to the future of computing. So, here we have various physical manifestations of cyber business. This was the first printing. By the second printing and the third printing, they changed their cover so you could actually read my name, which was rather good. And I've also here got this, which I always found fascinating. This is the Japanese translation. And uh, as I can't uh, read Japanese, I always found this amazing. But this is my words going in different directions. But uh, it also came out, as you can see, in uh, Japanese. And I've also got here, over here somewhere, here we are, bring it in. This is the uh, original manuscript of the book, which was submitted to the publisher. Book writing was a much more paper-based process in those days. You sent in a hard copy. Alison Mead, I remember, was my, my production manager. This is so long ago. And you can see the sellotape is rather uh, sort of yellowed now on the front of this. This was written in 1994, this was sent in. The book was written in 93, 94. And inside was the copy I sent him, which they then sent back with the copy editing on. You can see the book was first called The Cyber Business. They took that out. And, uh, oh, look, this page is intentionally blank. Uh, this is what books look like before they're published. And as you can see, they, they scribble on them, they get copy edited and all this, all this kind of stuff. I find it fascinating looking back at uh, what the book was like uh, all those years ago. Anyway, you're probably far more interested in what the book was actually about. And to give you a flavour, the preface opened with the sentence, the true impact of computer technology on human civilization has yet to be realised. It then argued that mass connectivity was driving the emergence of a global hardware platform that would transform human relationships and facilitate new virtual forms of organisation. Chapter 1 subsequently concluded that cyberspace offers a new territory to tame and explore. Its current cowboys may be bleary-eyed techno-freaks married to their screens, Yet these keyboard-hungry individuals will quickly become information barons with more power over people's lives than governments. Given that Google and Facebook did not exist when cyber business was published, and that Amazon was founded whilst the book was being written, this was also a pretty insightful prediction. In the late 1980s, science fiction author William Gibson wrote this trilogy of novels that introduced the word cyberspace. Gibson described cyberspace as an information space existing by the virtue of human agency and offering access to the sum total of information in the human system. By the early 1990s, the idea of people working and socialising in cyberspace in virtual reality was widely predicted as the next big thing. Cyber business reflected this and set itself the goal of predicting the implications of the ever closer harmonization of people, computer technology and organisational infrastructure. An initial focus of the book was the evolution of human computer interfaces from command line interfaces or CLIs through to graphical user interfaces or GUIs and on to virtual reality interfaces in which 3D objects can be manipulated in virtual space. Back in the early 1990s, a lot of research effort was being focused into the development of such virtual reality interfaces, with many commentators suggesting that we would soon be donning head-mounted displays to visit virtual offices, shop in virtual stores, and take virtual holidays. Indeed, here we're looking at one of my own early videos in which I attempted to illustrate what going to work in virtual reality may one day be like. While, 25 years ago, virtual reality was receiving a great deal of media attention, it was already apparent that immersive VR interfaces would only be one part of the virtual road ahead. Or, as I wrote, it is possible and often desirable to draw a distinction between virtual reality interfaces based upon the manipulation of 3D graphics objects and virtual reality systems which allow users to work with virtual representations of real-world phenomena. 
And, as I went on to explain, it's all too easy to see VR purely as an interface technology for trading applications and video games, when in practice it is a much wider concept which will have a profound impact on organisational and social structures over the coming decades. Throughout this book, the concept of virtual reality will therefore be taken to encompass any representation or metaphor of the physical world encoded in computer software with which human beings may freely interact. What soon became far more significant than 3D virtual realities were virtual communities which linked people together using computer networks and 2D displays. The first person to use the term virtual community was Howard Rheingold in this book, The Virtual Community from 1993, in which Howard described his participation in the Well or the Whole Earth Electronic Link which was a dial-up network in the San Francisco Bay Area, which became, as Howard put it, a virtual saloon in which people could socialise and share important information. In Cyber Business, I discussed how virtual communities, or what I called their personal virtual networks, would constitute a watershed in human communication, because they would allow mass many-to-many -many communication rather than just a broadcast model of a one-to-many communication. Now clearly today we don't talk about personal virtual networks, we don't talk about virtual communities much either, we talk about uh, social networks. So in cyber business I got the wording wrong when I talked about personal virtual networks and not social networks, but the idea of mass computer mediated communication, changing our social structures, our social habits, how we link to each other, that was all very much predicted in cyber business. Alongside virtual reality and personal virtual networks, cyber business predicted the emergence of many different forms of virtual organisation. As I wrote, virtual organisation developments are associated with the use of cyber technologies to allow people separated by time or distance to work together cohesively. The things I went on to predict and discuss included people teleworking from home, hot desking arrangements and the use of email video conferencing and other groupware to allow people to work in virtual teams. Today, these are all part of many people's working lives, but they were very new in the mid-1990s. To show how virtual organisations differed from their traditional counterparts, I illustrated a virtual organisation as a transient web of connected individuals and software overlaid over the infrastructure provided by conventional working structures. This was again pretty radical and was probably the most important conceptual contribution of the cyber business book. Certainly it was an idea that furthered my academic career as I went on to write many articles based on this concept. So here we are 25 years after cyber business was published and by and large things have worked out pretty much as I anticipated. Granted, immersive 3D virtual reality is nowhere near as developed or popular as I and many others thought it would be by now back in the 1990s. But there is no doubt that mass connectivity has become a critical aspect of the human condition and that a large proportion of people today spend a large proportion of their time in virtual realms. It's just that we access these using a 2D displays, not 3D headsets. When it comes to the future of computing, I'm absolutely convinced that's all wrapped up with artificial intelligence. And indeed, back in 2017, I did a kind of follow-up to cyber business called Digital Genesis, which was very much focused around the, the rise of artificial intelligence and related robotics. And in this book, I put forward a model I called the five ages of computing, which suggests that today we're just coming to the end of the network computing age and we're entering the cognitive computing age, a period of time in which all digital devices will be able to either internally possess or remotely access some form of artificial intelligence. And then probably 20 years from now, that technology will start to merge physically with us. We won't be carrying smartphones around 20, 30 years from now. We'll have technology integrated into our bodies to allow us to communicate directly with networks will have all sorts of implications. And that's something I discuss not just in Digital Genesis, but I first discussed 25 years ago back in a cyber business. 
But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.